Good afternoon, everyone. This is Kyle Welch with RCR Wireless News. I want to thank everyone for attending testing of indoor coverage in 3G and 4G LTE networks, presented by Knight. Our presenters today are David Myers, Manager, Sales Engineering, at, and Yarno Ciaro, Senior Product Manager, both from Anite. Uh, at this time, I'd now like to turn the presentation over to David. Thanks, Kyle. Okay, today we're going to be talking about testing of indoor coverage in 3G and 4G LTE networks, and more specifically, how to ensure fluent indoor 3G, 4G LTE data consumption, and what are the challenges, how to overcome them with professional indoor measurements. Brief introduction, uh, my name is David Myers. I'm a sales engineering manager at Anite Network Testing. I've worked with Anite for over three years now and have about nine years experience in the test and measurement field. I have previously worked as a sales engineer for RF planning tools as well as an RF engineer performing RAN planning and optimization. I've also spent time as a part of the Bluetooth Special Interest Group and hold a Bachelor's of Science degree in Electrical Engineering from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and an MBA from Baker University. And now I'll pass it off to Yarno. Hey, my name is Yarno and I'm working as a Senior Product Manager in the Anite Network Testing. And I've been working almost 15 years on different positions within the Nemo products. Thank you, David. Okay. Moving along, okay, so for the Unite Company introduction, Unite PLC, okay, the company overview. So Unite PLC is headquartered in the United Kingdom and employs over 400 people across Europe, the Americas, Asia, and the, Asia and the Middle East. We're broken down into two separate divisions. We have the network testing division and the handset testing division. So the network testing division offers air interface, network testing, and application of quality of service and quality of experience testing tools for mobile operators, network equipment manufacturers, service contractors, and regulatory bodies. On the handset testing side, they offer early handset development, integration, conformance, and interoperability testing solutions to equipment manufacturers, operators, and test laboratories. Okay, let's talk about indoor coverage and what's the challenge. So data, services, and application use increases in an indoor environment. We all know that. And some of the examples of this are internet connectivity through tethered mobile devices, streaming applications such as YouTube and Netflix, um, always on applications such as email and Facebook, and now Volte is coming soon. And really today, 70 to 80% of the data used is indoors. And you can see the two charts at the bottom that show the global handset data traffic trending up from you know, 2009, 2010, and what it's projected up to through 2017. Indoor coverage, some of the challenges. Really, the traditional cellular networks were initially designed for outdoor coverage and not indoor coverage. They were designed around an 850 1900 megahertz model, at least here in the United States, and data networks here in the U.S. range from 700 megahertz up to 2600 megahertz. So you have some type of co-location issues. Legacy mobile networks are designed for circuit switch voice calls and not packet switch data. So some of the questions that we have to ask are how to design the appropriate indoor solution, or how do we mitigate interference from indoors from the macrocell network and vice versa. Well, some of the challenges uh, using data indoors. So like the first challenge really is to identify a lack of coverage and or services inside. And we need to measure interference. We need to create sufficient coverage indoors that covers the entire building. We have challenges in antenna locations with high frequency, uh, verifying coverages and services within that building. And it's a uh, challenging to plan an indoor coverage. You know, propagation models are not entirely accurate, although I do think they're a useful tool. Uh, you also have to check capacity within that building and creating a plan for an indoor solution and then deploying that indoor solution. So how to overcome these challenges are really to measure the KPIs inside the building, measure the KPIs outside the building, do an interference analysis, 
plan and determine the appropriate in-building solution, deploy that in-building solution, and then you would have some type of acceptance testing and then further optimization. So today we're going to focus on the areas in blue, measure the KPIs inside and outside of the building, interference analysis, acceptance testing, and optimization. So how to overcome these challenges in a measurement process. So really, why are we measuring? Why are we measuring? So we need to identify issues with voice and data services, and we need to understand how we stand against the competition. You know, we need to look at the KPIs, so application-related statistics will help, and network-level parameters. And you can see below some of the network parameters and application parameters that we would look at, such as call setup time, call completion rate, SMS send time, uh, web page loading time, video buffering time, video setup success rate, file transfer time. And then we'd also look at latency jitter, packet loss, for LTE, RSRP, RSRQ, for example, RLC throughput, modulation and coding schemes, transmit power, handover success rates, time slot utilization, and block error rates. So what tools do we need to have in place to do this? Well, are we just going to do a single indoor measurement? Um, we, need, we do need a handheld for application testing. We need a handset for network parameters. And we may need multiple devices to do benchmarking or a comparison. So how do we do these measurements? Well, we can do one walk or many walks over the same building or floor. We can test the latest devices against the network, and there may be a need for scanning. So how do we analyze the measurements to ensure that the targets are met? Well, we can verify and analyze KPIs. We can solve identified issues, and we can do some type of acceptance testing. Use cases and tools requirements. So we have a couple use cases listed here. So the first one is venues such as stadiums or concert venues, shopping malls or airports where they are indoor and outdoor, a mix thereof. They're high capacity, short duration events. Or we have another use case, which is a multi-operator or a multi-technology scenario where you may have competitive benchmarking or deploying an agnostic DAS deployment or a complete operator network walk. So if you wanted to do LTE, wideband CDMA, and GSM all in a single walk. For use case one, for stadiums, concerts, and shopping malls and airports, you know, what's the challenge? And the challenge really is to ensure smooth mobile service usage in all areas of large buildings and venues. So how do we do this or what do we measure? Well, first thing is we want to make sure that we have coverage and we would look at the related RF parameters for that. We would test quality of service for key services. So we might look at 3G voice, for example. We might look at 3G or 4G data. We would look at LTE coverage and now we would start testing voice over LTE. So some of the key KPIs that we would look at are voice quality MOS, for example, and we would use Polka in this case. For data, we may look at average, minimum, maximum application throughput. We would look at maybe call success rates. For, for example, for YouTube, for YouTube related, we would look at jitter and buffering wait time. What are some of the requirements for a single indoor measurement? So we would need a handheld tool running on a commercial device. We would want this device to support all wireless technologies. We'd want to be able to do application testing with scripting functionality. We may want to do some type of automated testing where we can just program that device and leave it somewhere and let it collect data and upload data on its own. We would also want to have support for voice testing, say, for, for example, with Polka and PESC to do audio quality measurements. We'd probably need some type of forcing functions on that device so we can force that device on a system, band, or a preferred carrier lock, for example. For indoor mapping, we would need an indoor map with markers and geodetic coordinates. Uh, we may want to do HTML testing with a real web browser. And then it would be nice to have direct upload of these measurement files to an FTP, HTTP, or HTTPS server. 
And if we're doing larger building or where a larger screen is needed, we could use a tablet. So for use case one here, we have a, an indoor map indicating a, a, a route while walking. So here you can see that this is a mall type environment where we've measured RF parameters, messaging, and throughput, and these are all plotted by use of indoor markers during the walk. The advantages to this are, this is memorialized now for later analysis and building reports. And also the walk route is repeatable so we can do a before and after analysis. For LTE cell footprints, for example, this is um, a good example of planning versus reality or the measurement, measurement, measuring indoors, excuse me. So what we have here is a, a map with predicted coverage data of a building floor plan. And then around this, we have an actual building walk. And you can see as towards we get to the center of the building that the measured data lines up nicely with the predicted data. But in some cases, especially like on the outside here, that the measured data does not quite jive with the predicted data. So this is why the, the, prediction, the predicted data tools are good to have. It's a great tool, but there are also uh, pitfalls with those that the models have to be tuned and everything has to be set up accordingly for these tools to be useful. So once we've collected this data, we can actually now visualize this and analyze this. So in this screen here, we can see that the walk test conducted, it gives you the possibility to drill down into the data for troubleshooting. For example, we can go into the layer three messaging, or we can look at the physical downlink share channel throughput over on the right and see that the frequency domain resources are not fully utilized. For LTE, we can also do a throughput analysis. And here we can see that the number of assigned resource blocks have a direct impact for LTE throughput. If physical resource block utilization is low, there might be others sharing that resource or taking those PRBs, or it could be a sign of network congestion. A CQI or channel quality index is a measure of downlink quality, as well as downlink block error rate, low CQI, it means smaller transport block sizes are allocated or high block air rate or retransmissions will also reduce downlink throughput. For the second use case, which is a multi-operator, multi-technology type scenario, you know, what's the challenge here? And really the challenge is to ensure that your wireless network is competitive against other networks and there may be a need for potential troubleshooting. Another use case for this is to make sure your agnostic DAS system is performing well for all of your carriers. So what do you measure here? Well, it's kind of the same parameters as before. So we would look at coverage and RF related parameters. We would test quality of service for key services such as 3G voice again and 3G or 4G LTE data and Volte. Some of the key KPIs we may look at are voice quality again using Polka, um, data average min max application throughput, call success rates, and again, for example, for application testing using YouTube as a, an example, we would look at jitter and buffering wait times. So what are the requirements for indoor benchmarking for multiple wireless networks? Well, really you have to have the ability to carry a lightweight benchmarking measurement equipment that's based on commercially available handsets. You would have to have easy control of the slave units or other devices collecting data for you. You would have to have a system to support simultaneous use of multiple devices, support for a wide set of test applications such as FTP, YouTube, Facebook, etc. And then again, you'd want to do voice calls with Polka or PESC voice quality. And then once you've collected these measurement files, the log files can be uploaded again to your FTP, HTTP, HTTPS server or collected manually from the slave units for post-processing. You'd also want to make sure that you have sufficient battery life so you could actually walk for the whole entire working day. So again, for multi-operator, multi-technology, you have an indoor map that indicates the route while walking, but now we've got four different devices listed here. So I can see, and this is all done simultaneously, 
So the walk route is indicating where the coverage is good or bad for each operator. Um, you can use this for your network benched against, uh, benchmarked against the competition, or you can do a multi-technology, multi-carrier measurements completed in one pass. So now again, you can the, visualize and analyze the data. So you can use this analyze, uh, the analysis details for the basis for operators marketing or positioning. How does your network perform against the competition? You can measure the KPIs inside the building or venue. You can use this for network optimization. Um, and perhaps there's a needed operator network investment that needs to be made within this particular building. It can be used for acceptance testing. And again, with the analysis, the walk route graphically indicates where the coverage is good or bad for each operator. So you have these images that you can put in a report that are memorialized for later use. So here's an example um, in Holland where we're looking at T-Mobile, Vodafone, and KPN. And as you can see, Vodafone scored higher in overall bit rate of their network compared to KPN, yet KPN had lower YouTube buffering times. So having the highest bit rate doesn't necessarily guarantee the best user experience. So this is really where specific application testing comes into play. So some of the common mistakes or pitfalls uh, that we see with um, indoor data collection. So for indoor measurements, you know, using a UE in engineering mode and not logging the data, for example. Writing down RF parameters on a piece of paper and not logging them on a building floor plan. Not testing voice and data. Uh, collecting measurements on the wrong network. For example, collecting wideband CDMA data instead of LTE data and, and not knowing the difference of, of what network your device is on. For benchmarking, you'd want to make sure that you have script synchronization so your devices are doing the same things at the same time. So for benchmarking, this is very important. And understanding the devices and understanding the differences in device features and limitations to make sure that the devices match up, the device features match up with the types of tests that they are being assigned to do. For post-processing, really this is where all the errors in data collection are usually caught, leading to rewalks and, and more work and more time. Some of the post-processing tools are slow and time-consuming to use, and report generation, it can be automated, so sometimes we see customers that um, do these reports manually and they take time and piecemeal, and yet they can save a lot of time and just automate these reports. So getting to specifically a night's NEMO tools for network testing. For drive testing, we have NEMO Outdoor, which is our laptop-based solution, and we also have NEMO Multi-Light and a NEMO Walker Air Backpack. For indoor and drive testing, we have NEMO Handy, which can be on a handset or a tablet. For indoor and outdoor benchmarking, we could use NEMO Walker Air, or we could use NEMO Invex, which is a chassis-based solution. For frequency scanning, we can use the NEMO FSR1 scanner. For remote control, we have NEMO Commander that allows you to control devices out in the field. And for autonomous monitoring, we have NEMO Autonomous. All of these data collection tools all feed seamlessly into our post-processing tool called NEMO Analyze. And then for the customer experience monitoring, we have NEMO QMON and NEMO QView. And our, our products are used by more than 400 mobile operators and network equipment manufacturers, service contractors, and regulatory bodies from over 100 countries worldwide. Looking at Nemo Handy, Nemo Handy runs on the latest Android-based terminals such as the Samsung Galaxy S5. It can perform outdoor and indoor measurements. It can be simultaneously used as a regular mobile, mobile phone and then log measurements in the background. It has a rich variety of real-time displays, and all the RF and signaling data is logged to the phone's internal storage or memory card. Uh, this device is capable of doing Volte and Polka voice quality measurements. It can also do automated testing. We also have a feature called Cell Check, which is a quick uh, pass-fail, go-no-go way to quickly test a cell site's functionality. 
And we have easy post-processing with Nemo Outdoor and Playback Mode or Nemo Analyze or third-party post-processing tools. Nemo Walker Air. This is a, a lightweight benchmarking measurement solution based on Android smartphones. It comes with one tablet UE acting as the master control unit and up to six units, six slave units performing measurements. A DRT scanner can also be connected and collect scan measurements as well. So you have centralized control of the slave units from the master and they're the synchronized time and the start and stop measurements. You have synchronized scripting and status display of all units and on the tablet is where you do the indoor markers uh, sharing to the slaves. This has a wide set of test applications to include FTP, YouTube, and voice call with Polka and PESC voice quality. And the measurement files can be uploaded to your FTP or HTTP or HTTPS server. Nemo Analyze overview. This is our post-processing tool. So for example, Nemo Analyze would take measurements from Nemo Handy or Nemo Walker Air, and these can actually be pushed up to a cloud server and then Nemo Analyze can get these measurements from the cloud server either a standalone version or an enterprise version depending on the, the type of scalability that you need and then um, automated measurement file uploading and report generation can be configured so these reports are uh, made for you automatically the reports can contain um, and then these reports can be emailed when they're completed but for the post-processing tool, you can use this for analysis and optimization. You can use this for troubleshooting and benchmarking and reporting, as I mentioned earlier. For some of the indoor reporting functionality, we have um, automated measurement loading and report generation, which I mentioned earlier. We have interactive report templates, uh, wideband CDMA performance reports and LTE rep performance reports. So if you could imagine on some of these reports over here on the right, you could actually click on some of these boxes and these line graphs change. So it comes out in an Excel spreadsheet format, but again, it's interactive. It's, it's a very nice report. And we also have an indoor measurement manager, which is the data is organized now per building. So you would have all the measurement files and the building files per building. And then you could do single click building reports and automated map and log file pairing. Summary. So in closing, a well-performed indoor RF measurement gives the operator the ability to continuous, continuously optimize the network to one, secure quality of the end user experience and differenti differenti differentiate themselves from the competition. And as we've talked about earlier, measurements are not enough. You have to have post-processing and professional analysis of these results, followed by potential correction plans. When building a distributed antenna system or DAS system, RF measurements along with application testing to ensure DAS performance and quality of end user experience are very important. And you also need an easy to use, cost-effective, complete end-to-end -end solution is something you definitely have to have. Q&A, questions, welcome. So again, there's our product suite. And if you would like more information, you can reach us at our website at www.anite.com front slash Nemo, or you can contact uh, sales directly at nemo.sales at anite.com. Thank you, David. Uh, this is Kyle again. Uh, so we're gonna get to the Q&A section. We also have Yarno Sierra, Senior Product Manager here to help out with some of the questions. So the first question we got in is the carry-on solution. How much does it weigh fully loaded? Yeah, the fully loaded system with the, all the batteries included on all the six handsets, it's around nine pounds. So which is like 4.5 kilos. Great. Um, the next question in benchmarking, how do you do the measurements with a transmitter? Uh, usually in the benchmarking uh, configuration, the customer is actually testing the existing network and comparing the different operators. And usually when test transmitter is being used, that's uh, when you're actually building your indoor network so that you can 
search for the best possible antenna locations inside the building. Okay, great. Um, next, how many devices does a carry-on solution support? Um, how many networks and services can be measured simultaneously? Uh, the Papak solution, which is the Walker Air, supports up to six UEs, and the scanner can be also connected to one of the slave units. So it's then up to the phone that what are the technologies and services you can run. So if you have an LTE phone, you can do LTE testing and so on. Okay, great. Um, going to get into a few, but again, uh, everyone in the audience, I do encourage you to submit questions via the control panel. So the next question, um, Yarno, that we had come in is, can Nemo collect LTE and HSPA on different frequency bands at the same time? Yes, it can. And then you usually would go to a benchmarking system if you want to do it at the same time, because one UE can be only one time at one technology or band. So yeah, you need two, two UEs for that. OK. Um, is there any? product to test public safety coverage? Yes, we do have devices and chipsets that do support public safety. For that, please contact our sales, which is the email you can see it from there, and you can get more information related to that. Great. Um, are there any at night apps available on the Apple iOS store? For Apple iOS, we do have the CEM tool, which is the customer experience monitoring tool. For that, we can do also the iOS products. Great. Um, next question. How are floor maps imported to the device? Uh, for the floor maps, you can, the easiest way is that you use, for instance, the exit plan of a building or venue, and you just use your phone camera to take the picture of that, and then you import that to our application, or you can use a picture file to generate a floor plan map. Okay, great. Um, or, or, Kyle, if I may inter interject real quick, we can also load um, IB Wave floor plan maps as well. Great to hear. Um, yeah, great. So the next question coming in, are the benchmarking files you mentioned earlier synchronized? Yes, they are synchronized that all the measurements will start at the same time when you do the command from the master unit and then also scripting that you can command voice calls, data calls and all that from the master unit. So you don't need to kind of console each unit separately. Okay. Uh, when is the S5 available? Uh, it is available for pretty much all the major operators. So. Our sales will be happy to help you on that. Great. Does Nemo work with other post-processing solutions? Yes. The one of the well, Actix is supported. Exceed. Uh, David, do you have other things? On um, your mind? Thames Discovery. Yeah, those are maybe the three biggest one at least. So, but yeah, but it's yeah. They're, they're supported. You just have to make sure it's the right version. And in the cases of the third-party post-processing tools, sometimes they require a, another an additional license on their end to uh, look at our measurement file log formats. But one of the nice things about our measurement file formats is they're in ASCII text. So you can actually open them up and read them. They're not in an encrypted binary format. Great. So the next question that came in, what is the measured accuracy for indoor locations derived on the Android phones? Yeah, for indoor, we are actually using a marker type of plotting that you have the floor plan and then you put in markers because, yeah, as you told, the accuracy is or you don't even have a GPS fix at all. So you're putting like pinpoints on top of a floor plan hmm. to put your location. Great. Um, does the measurement... thing, oh, sorry. Kyle, excuse me. One thing I'd like to add there too is, you know, as you walk, it depends on the size of the resolution of the building floor plan that you're using. So it's, it's you know, x pixels by y pixels dimensionally, and those markers. So it will depend on on the pixel density of that image. 
But after you're done, say you've been walking all day and you, you're walking and marking stuff and it's a little bit crooked, you can actually go back into the post-processing tool and straighten those markers out and make them look nice so all your plots and reports um, all look aesthetically more pleasing. Great. Um, so does the measurement phone also work as a normal handset? Yes, you can turn off the Nemo application and then continue to use it as everyday phones. So you don't need to have the application running or it's not, yeah, there's no need to have it up and running all the time. Okay, great. Um, can the Nemo do CW measurements for propagation model tuning? Mm. It probably it can with the scanner. Yeah. But the hands, the handsets, you know, they work on some type of protocol, whether it's UMTS or LTE, CDMA, EVDO, GSM. So for CW testing, you would have to have a, a scanner in, um, in frequency spectrum mode to use that for model tinning. Um, great. Uh, we had a, another question come in about the, the Nemo Qmon. Uh, can either of you go into a little bit more detail on what that does? We don't have a slide for that, but we can connect, contact that person later and give more information if needed. It's like a customer experience monitoring that you install of, uh, the application to, um, let's say, hundreds of thousands of phones and collect information that way. So it's not an engineering tool, but more of a kind of a statistical information, like end user experience monitoring tool. Um, if you don't mind, Yarno, I can say a few things about this. Yeah, how, sure. how, how Qmon works is, is as Yarno said, you would, ins you would install an application on an iOS or Apple phone or an Android phone or a BlackBerry phone. It supports several different types of handsets. And then this application can be configured to either run in the background and the user is pretty much unaware that it's there or the user can actually intervene and, and make the device perform tests. But as you drive around town or you know, you're going about your daily life, um, if the device experienced, for example, a drop call or a block call or a data transfer failure, it will take that file and put it up to a cloud server to where all of this can be aggregated into data that you can view on a map of the area of interest. So it's, it's really not a one-off tool. It can work with, you know, say, 20 handsets or 200 handsets or 1,000. But the more handsets you have out there, the more aggregated data you get to look at statistically and get a better quality of user experience snapshot for your network. Great, thanks. So for the measurement phone, is a separate phone needed for each carrier um, as well as SIM card? Yes, first of all, a SIM card is needed. And the carrier question is, there's like two answers is that of course, if you wanna do measurements at the same time, then Yes, you need to have two phones. But if you have a phone and which is a multi-carrier, you can, let's say, have a Canadian phone and measure AT&T bands, just to be an example. So the phone doesn't need to be the operator variant. That that's true. The phones come in locked um, from us. So, for example, a, a T-Mobile phone can collect data on an AT&T network as long as it has an AT&T SIM. Great. And then, which scanners are supported? We do have, of course, our own FSR1. Then we do support PCTEL scanners, Rhodes Watt scanners, and the DRT scanners. Great. And does the system record the location of drop calls? Yes, we do record drop calls, especially when you have the GPS connected outdoors, then you have the exact location for that. And in the indoor, uh, solution you will see from the floor plan what was the approximate location for the drop call. Okay, uh, we had another person asking about if the, uh, you know, if it's available in South Africa, is it? Yes, we have representative in South Africa as well. So just connect, conduct our sales, and they will help you on that. Okay, great. Um, let's see what else we have. Uh, questions here. There was actually about the pause pressing, so wind catcher is actually one. It was mentioned in the questions, so I'm just commenting that generally. So Yeah, is it possible to analyze Nemo data on Actix and wind catcher? 
Yeah, so Windcatcher one was one that we didn't mention, so. Oh, um, okay. Um, can you go into greater detail on autonomous data analysis? Yeah, for the autonomous tool we have, it's a full-blown RF engineering tool. So it will collect all the RF data, the signaling and all that. And then we have a commander, which is kind of the fleet manager to control the tool so that you can remotely start, stop and configure your measurements. And if you need more information, our sales is, of course, happy to help on that. And we can give send more material of that. If the question was more centered around automated um, data analysis, uh, meaning post-processing, um, our post-processing tool has the capability to automatically upload measurement files, and then it, these measurement files can be sorted and placed in the appropriate folders, and then uh, we can run reports or run workbooks on these folders and generate reports from those at a certain time of day and then actually email those reports out. Um, if anyone would like more information on that, please just uh, send an email to um, nemo.sales at a night.com and we will get the appropriate person to either get you more information or do a brief demo for you. Okay, great. Um, so, I mean, I think that's about all the time we have for questions. Um, there's a, a couple other questions that I think uh, need to get into a little more greater detail. So I will supply both David and Yarno with those questions so they can follow up directly. Um, with that, I want to thank everyone for attending testing of indoor coverage in 3G and 4G LT networks. And I want to uh, thank both of our presenters, David Myers, Manager, Sales Engineering, and Yarno Ciaro, Senior Product Manager, both at a night. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you, everyone.